Welcome to MSB Sessions. Today we have Raul Sood, founder of Voodoo PC and Microsoft Ventures. Let's go and chat with him. So let's start from the beginning. Where did you grow up? I grew up in, uh, in Calgary, in Canada, actually. And what would you say was different about that than where you're living right now? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, Cal Calgary is a uh, is, is is kind of a place with um, how do I say it? Very few Indians were there when mm -hmm. we were growing up, and it was you know my my parents had just moved there, and so it was uh, very much sort of like a what you could probably call it a cow town. I think people used to refer to it as that, and they still do. Um, you know, Seattle is different because it's a it's truly a, a global uh, uh, melting pot. Um, you can go to Seattle and, and sit somewhere in, in Bellevue and just people watch and you'll see people from, you know, all over Europe and Africa and India and Asia and, you know, it's just, it's amazing uh, what a, you know, what, how worldly it actually is in, in Seattle, so, yeah. So what made you move to Seattle? So tell us your story. Oh boy. Uh, I mean, you know, moving to Seattle, the, 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 the reason we moved there, it was, a, it was a huge move for us, but the big reason we moved there was because of Microsoft. Um, you know, to, to, to be honest. So if you if, if you know if you want to know sort of the background behind that, um, um, when I was in uh, Calgary, um, I started up my first company uh, when I was uh, young, around 17 years old, um, and uh, and all I knew was working in small startups. Um, you know, working in small companies with, uh, with you know few resources and you wear multiple hats and you try and get stuff done uh, as quickly and as effectively as possible. Um, so I, I did that for a number of years. I did that for about 18 years, um, working in, in, in small companies and uh, and yeah, I had a lot of fun. Um, I had some good success. I also had some some failures and learnings. And uh, and you know ultimately an opportunity came for me to join Microsoft. And I thought it would be great, great uh, learning experience going into a big company and learning really how to operate within a large organization as a once entrepreneur. But you created, you know, you do PC. So why would an entrepreneur go into like a really big company like Microsoft? People ask that a lot, you know, mm -hmm. as, as an entrepreneur, what's it like being inside a big company? And, you know, I have to say, um, there was a time when I could have come to you and said that, you know, I'm an entrepreneur in a big company and it's really hard and, you know, tell you all the reasons why it's hard to survive on the inside than it is on the outside just taking risks. Um, it is hard. It's, it's hard because you're, you're used to getting things done at a certain pace and, and you're used to sort of not, not being in larger team environments where you're collaborating to get things done. But, um, you know, the, the, the reason I'm here is, is because I, you know, I've been sitting on the other side of the table for so long I wanted to see what I could do to join an organization that has the scale and reach that Microsoft does to affect the world in a more uh, profound way. Um, and, uh, and just, you know, now that I've been here for a few years, I can say that, look, I've had my foot outside as an entrepreneur. I've got one foot inside working in a big company. I'm starting to get acclimated understanding how things operate. And, uh, and it's, just, it's just as rewarding, but in a different way. Um. That's where Microsoft Ventures was founded, right? Yeah, Microsoft Ventures. Wait, how did that come about? Uh, well, you know, Microsoft Ventures, there's a, there's a number of people inside the company that are um, either entrepreneurial thinking or ex-entrepreneurs who saw the same kind of issues that I saw um, when we started the Bing mm -hmm. Fund. And, and, and really, ultimately, those, those issues at a very high level are that entrepreneurship is extremely prolific right now. Um, you're starting to see kids uh, becoming entrepreneurs at a much younger ages. You know, we have uh, we have a 14-year-old inside our accelerator in the UK currently, um, uh, and that's just that's nothing new. I mean, you know, you're starting to see kids in grade school uh, become entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurship is becoming such a big movement, starting mm -hmm. out at a very young age. Um, we saw the need to go create a program that was designed by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs to help them build and grow their companies. And the most important thing we could do is, is give them access to customers. So, you know, it, it came about by saying there's a there's a need out there. 
uh, and the need is that you know entrepreneurs want to build successful companies, and we as Microsoft have a duty to help make that happen because you know we was, we were the original startup as a company. We know how to do this, yeah. you know, and and if we can help if we can help do that in a large scale way, then we can start to affect change in a in a much larger scale, you know, global manner. So that's where Microsoft Ventures was. So like. what's the catch? Well, what's the benefit? So it's like joining the Microsoft Ventures. Well, you know, there's no, there's no catch. First mm -hmm. of all, I, the, the thing I will say is it's, it's hard to get in. Yeah. Very hard. Um, you know, we, we, we will get uh, uh, anywhere between say 500 and, and 1400 applicants per cohort. We'll only accept 10 companies roughly. Um, it's hard to get in, but it's probably one of the most uh, rewarding um, journeys that an entrepreneur can go through because you know. They, they, they learn everything from customer development to branding and pitching. They get connected with top entrepreneurs and VCs and angels from, from the industry. And they, they learn what it takes to build a, a successful company. And then they get access to customers and then funding. So, so you know, the opportunities are boundless, really. Um, there is no catch. I mean, you can build on any open source stack that you want. You know, we encourage you to try our cloud. You get on Azure and we will help you grow your business further by connecting you to PR opportunities and marketing opportunities and things like that. Uh, but really, we don't have an agenda here. We just want to help build successful companies. What do you think it takes to be an entrepreneur? I mean, you are an entrepreneur. What would you say you know, to people who are out there watching this now? You know, um, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, it's, it's like a, a mindset of, uh, you know, entrepreneurs are, tend to be risk takers. You know, um, they, they, they tend to not care about things like, you know, how much income they, they, they bring in. They, they really care about, you know, the good ones care about the problem they're trying to solve and, and creating a very compelling vision that, the, you know, that inspires people to go join them on their journey. So what makes a good entrepreneur is somebody who really understands the problem they're trying to solve. They understand how big it is, and uh, and they, they have a team, a balanced team that they've created uh, to go and help solve that problem. So you know it's it is a uh, it's 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 about you know somebody who, who is willing to take the risk and to jump out all you know both feet in to go do it. But do you think too much risk is like a bad thing? Like come on, like people, the entrepreneurs are known to be you know egotistical and you know arrogant and. They're really bold and they're like you know, go a bit too far out like how would you especially in accelerator like how would you have people come in that are such strong personalities and deal with that like it's a big thing yeah you know one of the criteria we have when we pick a uh, when we pick a ceo when we pick an entrepreneur is, is we look at their uh, ability to uh to to listen right and if, and if and if we find that they're they're not willing to take coaching or they're not coachable, or they're not willing to listen. Then, then really, they get eliminated very quickly. But if we find that they're they're so smart uh, that, that that sometimes they're you know they they'll speak in a way that comes across as them being you know uh, insensitive to, to the people on the other end of the table, we can coach them. We can help them to say, look, you're you're absolutely brilliant. We want you to tell your story in a way that people will will understand that they won't feel like you're sort of talking uh, down to them. You know, or we want to help. You know, you tell that story in a in a better way. Um, it's uh, it's it's just finding entrepreneurs that are humble, that are empathetic, and that are coachable and that we really care about. Your first company was Voodoo. So explain what it was. Voodoo was a high performance um, computer company. We used mm -hmm. to build gaming computers. Um, and we used to build the world's fastest and best gaming computers, and uh, they happened to be silent um, because because we would we invented things like liquid cooling in mass production. We we made you know computers that were cooled by liquid, similar to cars. Um, we also created fanless PCs, which was never really heard of uh, in the gaming space mm -hmm. because the the, the 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 components were so hot. How could you possibly cool them with with no fans? Um, and uh, that's the kind of stuff we did. We just like to hack around and, and do things like that. So, you know, it was a it was it was a luxury computer manufacturer. Who inspired you? Who got you, or who helped you to get where you are today? Well, you know, first is uh, it, the, these things start start from home, right? Yeah. You know, when, when you when you think about you know how you got to to where you were, it wasn't 
It's, it's the people you surround yourself with, right? In, in my case, you know, my wife was a big part in, you know, uh, encouraging me to sort of go out and, and do something. Um, um, but then also, you know, my family. Like, I, I think about my, my dad and uh, growing up, uh, you know, in, in an environment where, you know, he came from nothing. I mean, he, he moved from Kenya uh, with my mom and uh, he was selling butter door to door um, in, in England. Um, trying to make a living, and then then he ended up working at a butcher shop. Um, he would tell everyone he was the butcher, but he was actually sweeping the floors, you know. Um, and then uh, and then he moved us to Canada, and uh, she moved my mom to Canada, and then that's where we were born, my brother and I. And my dad started getting into real estate, so he was he was kind of a high flyer. I mean, he would do uh, the craziest things to go and sort of um, work his way up in the world, and uh, and and I learned a lot from him. I, I learned, you know, what what. It was great about him, what you what you should do, and then I also learned from his, his mistakes. And you know, he made many mistakes that I, that I learned from. So he was a huge inspiration. And then I also think, you know, I, I started Buddha at a very young age, and, and I've always been in the computer industry for the longest time. I've always been a, uh, you know, I know this probably sounds like I'm wearing my Microsoft hat, but I'm really, I'm not, I'm, I'm being honest here. I, I've been a Microsoft partner for a long time. I always use Windows because mm -hmm. Windows was the largest platform for gaming. You know, I've always been inspired by, by Bill Gates, and, and the reason I'm inspired by Bill Gates is because he he built such a great company that has, yeah. and, you know, if you just go to Seattle and you look at all the, uh, the infrastructure that Microsoft has enabled, and then you think about the world impact that it's had as a company, you know, it's enabled governments and it's enabled, uh, you know, countries to thrive, and it's also enabled what we have today, which is a thriving, uh, you know, startup ecosystem where every company in the world is now a software company. Right, and that started with the foundation of companies like you know Microsoft, right, and you know Apple and you know Dell. These companies were you know founded way back when, when, when you know this stuff wasn't uh, as, as big as it is now. And Bill Gates has now dedicated his life to making the world better. I mean, how, how can you you know look at him and fault anything that he's doing? He's just he's just an amazing person. So you know, aspiring to to uh, to do just even a fraction of what he's able to do is is uh, is really. It's really big, so. Do you think we're in a bubble right now, like a tech bubble or an accelerator bubble? Well, a, a tech bubble, I, I, I would say not really. I, it's not like 2000, and the reason I say that is every software, every company now in the world is a software company. That's the truth, yeah. right? And so, you know, we, we need to see more uh, engineers uh, come out, more, more uh, you know, uh, designers come out uh, of schools. We want to see more women. Uh, more daughters going to STEM schools, you know, and and um, and and coming out so they can start creating things. So it's not really there's not really a tech bubble now. Is there a bubble for accelerators? Probably, you know, I would say that there's a very high percentage of accelerators that uh, that aren't really sustainable, you know, because they're taking large equity in companies, and you know, there's only really a top few that do really well, and um, and the amount of volume you have to put through. Um, the uh, the amount of capital that you have to inject is very high, so it's it's uh, the, the startup or the accelerator incubator space may change a little bit, but I think in terms of um, tech, I don't think we're in a tech bubble. I think tech is here to stay and it's going to continue to grow. So finally, yeah. what keeps you motivated? Like you know, what what gets me up in the morning? Yeah, it it's the fire that many of us have, which is you know. You are you are super excited. I, first of all, I'm really excited to get up in the morning and come to work because I get to meet people from all around the world mm -hmm. who are solving very interesting problems that you you may have never heard of before. You know, and and uh, you get to see people in their own ecosystems doing really great things. So that fires me up. Um, um, and then the other thing is, you know, the, the the entrepreneurial fire to go create something is something that is 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 always itching. Right, I've been doing this now for three and a half years or four years inside Microsoft, and you know the, the the next question is, you know, when do I decide that now that that now that we've created this 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 great thing, Microsoft Ventures, when do I decide that you know I want to go and step out again and, and take yeah. the risk? Are you gonna do that? Like, are you thinking about it? Oh, you're always thinking about it. You know, I'm mm -hmm. always thinking about it, and, and it just it just has to be an issue of time and, and the right the right. Um, the right thing that I'm passionate about. So, you know, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So that was Rolls Food by MSV Session.